POV-ish. A nice, yeah, a nice sort of like sinister looking down one. Um, and then basically for the for this for this putting stuff on, it's it's a bit it's almost like the A team. It's just like mm -hmm. hands and feet. Now maybe we should hold off can on that. Just it can be exactly like the If someone can pull up the clip, I will do exactly the same. Um, I love it when a day gets one. Um, okay, so let's start at the very beginning. Let's start with this piece. Debug came from uh, me being ten years old and my uh, lovely strange father taking us to 2001 A Space Odyssey for my birthday party. So there was all these traumatized 10 year olds who went, went expecting like Star Wars or something and, and watched Kubrick's sort of masterpiece. Um, and uh, so, you know, sort of sitting there, sort of sipping my, my cream soda through, a, through a, uh, um, one of those red Twizzlers, I just went like, wow, like this is, you know, this is, this is space, this is a, you know, this is a, this is a computer that wants to kill people and I found myself the whole time siding sure, with the computer. Sorry, like I just felt that that was, he was a much more interesting character to me than all the other people in it. Um, so no offense to the actors, of course. Um, so, you know, a thousand years later, I, I just, when I sort of had an opportunity to write a science fiction film, I wanted to do a sci-fi film. Um, I didn't do one. My first film was a comedy and it was a much simpler process. And I really wanted to do sci-fi because that's what I, when I go to Netflix, that's what I look for on Netflix. Right. It's like new little indie sci-fi things. And internationally, they're doing them all over the place. but. North America, it's this sort of much maligned genre. There's not a lot of, sort of English language sci-fi that's done on a sort of a lower budget. They're all like 100, 200 million dollar right. movies. And now I know why. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I wanted to see the indie side of stuff. Like my friend Vincenzo made this film Cube years ago. And it was just such a, it was a ridiculously hard thing it's to shoot. It's a cornerstone for Canada. I it mean, is. Well, it is. And this is, but to me, this is, this is what, I'm, I've come back to Canada from L.A. So I'm now... I'm now an American returning to Canada, and all of a sudden I'm being laughed at by the Canadians because I'm like, well, slap a Canadian sticker on that. And they're like, oh, why? Telefilm? I'm like, no, because we're Canadians. That's what it, what it you know, make it Canada. Um, and I think, especially now, we're living in a time where these little films, it only takes one of these little films to take off, like Cube. Like, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just it's set fire in, 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 um, in, 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 uh, in Montreal, I was going to say, in France, right. and in Japan and stuff, and all of a sudden it, it had more recognition outside of Canada than it did in Canada. And I just, you know, I mean, this is very much an homage to the Cube and trying to, you know, basically, you know, trying to use those elements that, that I felt worked in the movie so well. And, um, you know, and Vincenzo and I are old, old, old friends, and, and our, our influences are very similar. I mean, right. so, so there's definitely a sensibility there. I would not equate it to Cube. Cube is just a genius film. I, I would I'd love it to be Cube. But, um, but it's my own little, my own little version of it. Um, and so basically, as a computer hacker, I was very interested in that side of stuff. And I've always felt that the that, that true evil in the world is not, not the technology, it's the people. It's the people. And, and the way things are going is we're, we're sort of melding together into these... So we all have a little bit of technology in us, you know, whether it's sort of medically related or even just the, the little pills we take now that have, you know, tiny little things that, that uh, you know, with the, you know, time release capsules and stuff. And the idea of going to the distant future where we are, we are basically almost like we're, we're just basically the flesh around whatever, you know, whatever, uh, whatever sort of surveillance material is in us. Right. And, and the computers have gone the other way because in my research I found you know, they were using like leech neurons and stuff to, right. to, to create computers. I thought, well, how far a jump is it to put you know, human neurons in there? And um, it's just the idea that there's, there, there's a computer with a little bit of human in it and there are humans with a little bit of computer in it. And the idea of playing with this and that, you know, why wouldn't a computer have a right to defend itself? I mean, if, if, you, if it's under threat, if we're under threat, whether we're right or wrong, if we're under threat, we, we fight back. So right. my wife's a little concerned. She, she produced the movie because she said, she said it's, it's like a movie that basically is my, is, is my hate letter to humanity. I'm basically saying, <laughs> look, I don't like humans. I like technology, basically. So, That's so funny. Um, but I think that sci-fi fans feel that way to some extent. And in a way, they identify more with the computers than they do with the people. Right. Um, and I kind of wanted to take that to the extreme and turn that into a into a sort of Final Destination type of horror movie about, about this, you know, this very fun, peculiar, uncomputery computer that's got a little bit of human in him that just makes him a little crazy. And, uh, and how he just turns these young, these young hackers against each other and, and knocks them off one at a time. So <laughs> it should be fun. I, I, I hope it's fun. And then as I've got older, I realized that my love is not just, it, my, my love wasn't so much the acting, it was just being on set and being a part of making these things. It just, I, I just, you know, it's, it's, I feel, I, I sort of joke with my wife that, I mean, less so now that I have a kid, the five-year-old, I definitely feel at home when I'm with a five-year-old, but now, I 
still feel like this is, I'm most comfortable on a set still, you know, so. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I've been doing it for so long now that I think that's, that's, that's sort of a part of it, so. Well, I'm wondering if the story has evolved since you started, like, was there a point where it changed and you're like, oh, well, maybe now it's this. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it definitely started off and the idea was to shoot it incredibly low budget, like, basically, you know, uh, instead of spaceship corridors, it would just be corridors in an old building and basically do it very, very cheaply. And right. um, then we talked to Copperheart about it, and they said, "Well, look, why not? Why not make something out of this? Like, why not? You know, why not sort of make a real movie type thing?" And I was a little leery because I, I'm a big fan of just doing. I just want to. I'm so impatient. I just want to make it, so I don't like waiting. But what was nice about it was we basically then had a year of just developing the script and just changing yeah. stuff and trying this. And we tried, you know, for a while there was a found footage film. Um, you know, the idea of just doing a sci-fi found footage, and then. It just, which I think was actually really, it was an interesting um, uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of project for a writer to do to say like, okay, take this film that was a film and now reduce it and try to make it possible as a filmmaker to work just as found footage. Um, and then just the nature of the shoot, it became, you know, returned to being a film again, you know, and which I'm really glad about because, you know, we could, we could have made the movie found footage right. on this budget, but now we get to actually... Play. And, that, and the found footage thing is something that I, I think there's definitely some great stories for that. Right. Um, but when it comes to sci-fi, you just, you know, with these hallways and the, and the you know, and space, you just want to... The set is amazing. Oh, is it? Oh, good, good, yeah. good, good. It's, it's, um, it's, I can't even tell anymore. It's, 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 it's been, it's such a, it's such a weird place to be shooting because you're in these hallways with these weird lighting the whole time and we sort of, I, I stagger out at night and it's like, oh, look, Toronto, you know, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it really is amazing, and it's what's really nice about it is that is that you know I came into this thing with one very different idea. I mean, right. it was going to be a very dark movie, you know, very sort of um, uh, you know aliens, very sort of dark, uh, uh, moody kind of thing. And then in talking with the various sort of heads of departments and stuff, they were all saying like, well, you know, look at the new sci-fi, look at Sunshine, look at Moon, look at right. look at the you know the the whiteness of it. I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. or Kubrick, you could say. Because again, 2001. Yeah, so of course. In a way, we've sort of gone back to that, and there's something kind of nice. These these kids are cooler than I could ever be. So you know, I sort of I sort of went with it and said, like, let's see how we can make this work with what we've got. And it's just, it's I love that because I think, uh, you know, my, my wife and I joked that we could call our company um, Happy Accidents because to me the the funnest part about shooting is not getting the shots you want, is right. finding something else at the, in the spur of the moment, and that often you would never have thought of without that desperation and mm. sort of the blood and the sweat and the, and the fear that makes you come up with these bizarre shots that you just wouldn't have done otherwise. It's like, I can't get in the frame. Well, tilt the camera. <laughs> oh my God, that's great, you know? So, and it's, it's really, you know, I, I imagine, I can only imagine that, we were joking with Steve from Copperheart that, um, who's just been amazing on this. Like, it's just, it's so nice to truly have like creative producers as right. opposed to just, number of producers, yeah. you know, I mean, Steve and Mark and Jane, they all have stuff to bring to the script, to bring to the, the, the shooting, and it's just so nice to be able to go like, well, I don't know what to do, what do you think, <laughs> you know, and it's, they, there's always ideas, and, you know, and they're running off into splinter groups so we can get this stuff, and I mean, it's just, it's just been amazing, um, but it, it's, it's, it's that difference between making a movie like this and something like, you know, I was in um, Rise of the Apes, right. again, an amazing experience for me, just watching a director who has to manage such huge, there are whole other divisions that go off and shoot, you know, bits. Um, and this, the thing about the indie film is that you're a part of everything. Right. You know, uh, I mean, you're on set painting, you're picking up cables, you're, you know, you know, what kind of sandwich do you want? I mean, you're just basically having to do everything you possibly can to make movies, which is how we got into it. I mean, Vincenzo and I used to make movies when we were 13. He did all the making of the movie. I just stood in front of it trying to look pretty. Um, but at the same time, even while we did that, I would still, you know, boom for the shots that I wasn't right. in and, you know, help with the lighting and, you know, of course the equipment, we all had to carry that, you know, right. so it, it's a bit, it's a bit closer to returning to my roots than, than making the big, the big movies, um, you know, as an actor, obviously, and also just as an actor, after a while, you know, you know, gravity takes effect and, you know, <laughs> it's better to be behind the camera, you know, um, I, it's, we've got such a lovely, you know, young, sort of vibrant cast and, and um, you sort of see that, it's so funny watching actors now and going like, oh, I remember that, like, do it. And I find myself doing exactly what other people used to do. It was like, now you've got to go off to LA now and do this and then come back and, you know. So it's, uh, 
yeah, it's been a really amazing, amazing experience. So now we just have to finish it. <laughs> well, I'm wondering though, what was the spark that made you go, okay, I'm doing acting. Wait, I want to write, I want to direct. I mean, obviously that early experience must have mm. had an impact, but was there something that sparked it? It was basically Dog's Breakfast. We, mm. we were doing Stargate and I wanted to direct. I wanted to try directing, I hadn't done it. And I talked to the, the producers yeah. about doing it on Stargate. Because right. you know, a lot of actors will come in and direct an episode. And they were really quite justifiably reticent because you know, actors can sometimes show up on set and not have a clue what they're doing for the directing and then they're kind of screwed because they got right. a lot of money involved. So they were like, well, we need to see something, we need to see something. So I thought, oh great, I'll do a little short. And I was like, well, screw it, short. let's just make a feature. Then you can actually sell a feature. All right. So we just did this little movie that we were going to do on a video camera and we were lucky enough to have um, uh, John Lennick, uh, who was one of the producers on, um, or line producer on, um, on Stargate. And uh, basically he provided us with the Stargate crew, and I guess I was nice enough to them during the shoot that they actually wanted to show up on their vacations wow. as well. And we just deferred everything. We made this little movie, and then MGM bought it because of the Stargate connection, and next thing you know, it's all over the world, and people got their deferrals, and, or at least a part of them anyways. And yeah, uh, yeah and that was just such a great experience, and Jane produced that. Right. So, um, and we strangely got along really well. I mean, like, as a couple, we were, you know, we had arguments, obviously, but no more than a producer and a director would. Wow. But she was a part of the writing, she's a part of the directing, part of the producing, and we just as a team, it worked. And it was so much fun again. It was just us, our dog, my sister, a few <laughs> friends. It was just amazing. And ever since we did that, it basically, I soured on acting after that, because I was just like, you know, God, I want to just get back to making stuff, you know? So That's well, I keep joking that the next film is going to be little rats, because we've had a lot of rats on the show. <laughs> and um, so I keep saying, like, that's the star of the next movie. Little little rats on motorcycles, doing like Mad Max on the road beats and that kind of stuff. So, but uh, it's just such a creative process. You just you get in here when you're on set and you're, you're doing stuff. And you just come up with ideas for other things. Like it's right. the more the work breeds work, and you know it's just yeah, obviously you can tell I, I enjoy it. That's quite amazing. A lot. You know. Well, my last question is: I mean, yeah. there's not a lot of sci-fi in Canada. There's not mm. a lot of horror in Canada. That's I mean, true. does this Why feel the hell like not? filling a void? Is is that? Is that a it, good thing to be filling that space? I, it, it is for me. I mean, I you know I'm back in Canada because this is the place to make movies now. I mean, we have an we have the ability to make movies that are not being made anywhere else. You know, we've got we've got the the, the resources, we've got the tax credits, we've got the crews, um, we've got the creative. I mean, because they're all in the states. Um, that's not. I mean, but I mean, the, the reality is that just there's such a there's such a drain down to the states yeah. of, of people with, of talent. And I think we they're all they go down to the states. They get agents down there. They get representation. What happens? Bang! They're back up here shooting again. Yeah. So we need to figure out how to keep them here. And the way to do that is to let them make movies like this. You know, Pinewood's been amazing about that, giving us breaks that no one else would have done. And like, we're right. shooting in a real studio that's soundproof and you know that's meant to shoot movies. Um, so I, I, I'm hoping. I mean, I'm, I, we're here to stay for a bit. So if not forever, I mean, who knows? I, I may be home. Um, nice. So uh, because this is a great place to make movies, it really is. You know. Um, and I hope to make many, many more. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you very much. Oh, God, thank you. Yeah, yeah. pleasure thank indeed. Pleasure. Yeah.